Good morning.
produces gifts. Produces ones who think afar off and don't just think about today and think about themselves, but can see a far off generation. What you contribute here on earth is out of the covenant he gave us. It comes out of that space. And so as we continue to teach on sowing, do not misinterpret what I'm saying. That God, do not think that God needs you to give for you to be saved. Do not think that God's looking at your finances and going, you have to work this because you need, you need to be right with me, you need righteousness, you need atonement, you need to be justified. No, no, that's only through Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. But those who are in Christ produce. In Jesus. Will, my trusted assistant, going to bring something back into play. Now, don't go to sleep if you were here last week. <laughs> Debbie? Okay, you got the heavy hand this time, Will. You're going to be that? Yep, yeah, good. So now I switched it around. You can take the sheet straight off because you know what's under here. Now I switched it around a bit so that you don't think it's the same as last week. Last week we had this up this end. Right. So the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of heaven is fixing to make its move. And so we were talking last week about the mindset of the sower and, and, and how the kingdom of heaven, how God uses what he gives us. He takes from what we have, from what's in the way. There's a weight here. There's, we have finances. We have an economy. We have a life we have to live. It's all here in this weight, right? We, and, it, and it's heavy. It's weighing down the space. But when it comes to our economy, I believe that God has embedded in our economy, it's embedded in our weight, it's embedded in our stuff, something that He blesses. And when we move it from the weight and we offer it to the space, the little bits a lot. You know it is leverage. But my, my little, the, the, the loads and efficiencies, on the crowd that day, 5,000 men. It said that there were at least 3,000 women and children, that there were about 8,000 people hungry. They were away from the marketplace. There was nowhere to buy food. They were hungry. Jesus said they were hungry. Jesus asked his disciples to do something to meet the need. The disciples immediately looked at the need and went, Oh, bless God. <laughs> How are we gonna, where are we going to come up with all this fish? And I don't have my loaves here this morning. I <laughs> well, this fish here, right? And, and so... The disciples, they looked at the weight and they just went, oh man, I can't see it happening. They immediately went to money. It's going to cost us this much. And then they immediately went to supply. If we had the money, there is nowhere to buy it. But Jesus knew what he was going to do. He had already positioned something in the crowd that he was going to bless. And so the little boy came and he said, well, I can eat the loaves and the fishes myself and it can meet my need. But last week we talked about, you can do that. But what God supplies to sow has no end on it. You see, if I eat this can of sardines, you might appreciate it if I don't. If I'm going to crack this open right now because someone has said
So the boy could have had the fish in the loaves and could have put them in his belly. And they stopped at five loaves and two fish. But when he soaked them, when, when he gave them to Jesus and Jesus blessed it, what's going on with my... <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> God's permanently... <laughs> right, so what God does with when we sow it, He multiplies it. Right, so this, this is no longer five loaves and two fishes. This is no longer any nuts. This has access to the multiplication that God planned for it. Right? So this morning I want to continue on. I want to talk about some mindsets of souls and you can look at the leveraging thing happening there. Last week I finished with a statement around heavenly rotation. When Jesus blesses something, its essence becomes eternal. Everlasting. His kingdom that has no end keeps it in a rotation. I mentioned that we sold a car a few years ago, that Tony and I felt the Lord speak to me very clearly. Now, what is it? What is it like when God speaks to, to me? Maybe you're thinking, well, what does it sound like when God speaks? So, if I said to you, "What do you want to have for dinner?" It's right around. Sorry, we're going home for lunch. Now, what are you going to decide to eat when you go home for lunch? What did that? What, what did you say? That ribs. Oh, ribs. <laughs> I'm thinking sardines would be more whole meal, but the ribs could be more tasty. Right, so, so, so when David said ribs, there was a thought process that came into that space where inside, before David spoke it, there was a thought, there was an idea that, that prompted you to say it, right? So when, when God speaks to us, that's like how God speaks. Right, so there's this prompting inside where you're deciding, suddenly you think something. So I'm at church this, this one Sunday morning and, and I'm about to song lead. And we're, we're doing some rehearsals, and I'm walking up on stage, and, and Lorraine's there, and I feel this prompting, give Lorraine a car. So it's like, I'm having ribs for lunch. Give Lorraine a car. I'm like, well, that just, that, that's not, I wasn't thinking about that before. And that sounds, that's not something I'd come up with. And I'm like, okay, God, well, I'm thinking about my car. I'm thinking, well, my car's got some work to do on it. And what's interesting is, two weeks prior to this, this inspiration of God that I believe inspired me in, a friend, ministry friend of mine had a daughter that was going to university and she needed a car. And he was a full-time missionary in Cairns. So he relied on... He relied on some of this stuff. He relied on what was over here with us for us to pull some of that out and see it multiply for him. And, and because, because there wasn't much of that, because we'd been eating it, maybe we'd maybe we'd clothed ourselves in it, he was going, God, I don't have any finance. Why don't I do a car? So I'm going to leave you for a car. He gets a phone call from one of the guys that goes to his church. He says, I believe that God's told me to give you a car. And he's like, yes, God. Woohoo! And then and he said, Brett, when he said, I'm going to deliver it to you. And I'm getting excited waiting for the testimony. This guy delivers the car on a trailer. Because it's not registered. Because it's got a whole heap of work needs doing to it. So the God, I'm not even going to explain that. God said, I'm going to give you a car, so here it is. He rocks it up and he pushes it off on the trailer onto the onto his driveway. And, and he's already prepared his daughter to come home from wherever she was to, to be meeting and to greet her car. Oh, God's blessing. Oh, yeah, God's going to give you a car. She walks down the driveway and like, goes, what is that? Is a jump on the driveway. <laughs> Bless your car. That's God's blessing to I don't know about you, but I got mad. Yeah. Oh, that's I got mad. I, I tell you something. Why I got mad is that I believe that we carry the dignity of God in our movements. That what we do declares something about Him. Come on. I got, I got, I got who God is held up in all my movements. I got mad. And I said to Him, man. No, right. That guy saw you as a dumb place. Now we're going to deal with his rubbish. And, and you don't even know what the cost is to fix that. You're better off having a minor registered car that's got a road where you didn't know something about it. Oh, come on. And I, I remember thinking, God, if I ever give someone a car, oh, bless God. That car's going to be roadworthy. 
That guy's going to be working water and it's going to be a blessing. <coughs> Two weeks later, God says, give the rain a car. So I'm thinking, you can't be our car because I know our car's got some gearbox issues. Can't go that one, so we're going to have to survive. Now I didn't sell the car to get a car. I sold the car for the harvest. What God decided, God, God was going to do with that car. The mindset of the sower is don't sow to your own gain. You sow to the gain of another. You sow to the multiplication. So this little boy, when he saw this and he heard what Jesus said, he's like, oh man. Oh man, yeah, I've got something. Pick me. Pick me. So he brings it because he's not thinking, oh, Jesus, come on, you've got a secret. I'm going to have five fish. Two fish, five wives. You see what you want to buy. God, just, God, I'm just, I'm just really hungry. No, he's like, hey, God, bless it. Go to God and go multiply it. In. I'm going to so spill some juice. So, so the word blessed is a powerful word here, right? The word blessed, so when Jesus took it, he blessed it. He invoked, he called on through prayer, he called on a release, a heavenly release of what had already been spoken over prosperity of those loads of fish. That's what he was doing. When he blessed it, that's what he was doing. The word blessed means to invoke prosperity. To bring to something what has already been spoken over it. Remember Jesus said on the hill that day, the word says that he knew what he was up to. When he said to the disciples, he knew what he was going to do. See, he'd already identified what he was going to invoke a blessing on. Now, I believe in all of our finances, all of our economies, God has done the exact same thing. That's what he's doing. That's what offering is. That's what tithe was all about. That's what it's about. It's about God going, I've got multiplication going on. And so if we don't sow it, he don't grow it. He called in prayer for a release of inspiration. He called the women to go to that conference. It's inspired. Yeah. Come on. So the mindset of the soul. I believe the Holy Spirit brought the early church to a broader vision. In Acts, he is the power of the mission enterprise. He's the one who's powering the mission enterprise. He's the one who's going to think outside of you. He's doing that. He's thinking, right? Go to the ends of the earth. What, who does that? Someone who thinks outside of themselves, right? Go to your neighbor and preach the gospel. Who does that? Someone who thinks about something happening on the other side of the fence. Not just what's happening on this side of the fence. So I believe we as followers of Jesus Christ have blessings stored up in us. Where the kingdom of heaven is fixing to make its own. But if we don't sow it, it never gets to experience the multiplication. That is it. Two weeks ago we had some cane seeds here. You know it. When the cane was on, when the cane was growing, it wasn't reproducing. It was only producing a finite supply. But a sower's mindset understands that in that finite supply is more supply. They understand that in there I can't eat it all. If I send it all to the mill, if I eat it all, there's no multiplication for that. So, so Jesus, Father God, straight after the flood, he put some things in motion. There's going to be seed time and harvest. It's just going to be night time and day time. And then Jesus is hanging on the cross. Jesus is hanging on the cross and God disturbs it. He brings nighttime into the middle of daytime. And everybody knows it's not nighttime. That it's actually daytime. And so they know something is something is coming back. So if you think about seed time and harvest time, right in the space of that, the kingdom is fixing to make its move. Come on, the kingdom of God is fixing to make its move. 
And when we went bold because of a dumb mindset, do you know, I think that some of us have some stinking thinking. You've got some fishy thoughts going on. <laughs> Joe, you, 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 you picked the right seat today. <laughs> so just to be sharing, we move it over here. <laughs> it's edible, Tristan, if you wish to have a piece. It's edible. So some of us have got some fishy thinking going on. And what God is wanting to do is wanting to transform our behaviors because the kingdom of heaven wants to make a move. He's ready to make a move. And what I love about sowing is in 2 Corinthians 9, let's go there. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 9 so that we can tie it all together and relax. I believe Life Impact Church is a community of believers where we know, grow, and sow to Jesus. We get to know Jesus. We get to grow in Jesus. We get to sow to Him. Our gifts, our time, and make no mistake, 2 Corinthians 9 is talking about your coin. It's talking about your coin. It's talking about money. Now, back in Genesis 9, it's really cool when God said seed time, harvest time. So Noah and, the, and his family have just come out of the ark and God set some things in place and he says, you're only going to see a rainbow. It's going to be a covenant. One worker covenant. One worker covenant. That every time you see a rainbow, God is reminded that he's never going to flood the whole earth again. And right in that space where he's talking, he's speaking about being perpetually minded. I've got to just go there. You, you stay where you are. I'm going to read it so I get it right. Genesis 9. He's talking about something perpetual. So we can see that God is into someone after us. How important it is for us as a church and follow Jesus Christ to be perpetually minded. To think about perpetual generations. Come on, if you've read the Bible more than once, you know that inheritances, inheritances, and generations to generations is all written there. It's all in that space. He's talking about fruitful multiplication abundantly in the earth, that there would be multiplication going on, and I'll establish my covenant with your descendants after you. That word descendants after you is perpetual generations. That there are things concealed you can't see right now. They're going to appear in another generation. In your portion, that I believe is God's, are things concealed that you can't see now. We know it's true because that's our God. You know, when we study Scripture, Something's out of balance. Who's my scientist? <coughs> Too many things going off over there. I want to stay focused here. Perpetual. So now we're in 2 Corinthians 9. God isn't just telling us what to do. And I believe this is key to a transformed life. So we aren't reading the Bible just going, oh, God's just giving us a bunch of things we have to do. God's actually describing And if we can see that as we read Scripture and we do what we're commanded to do and we walk in obedience, that God is describing Himself, we will move completely differently in our life. Yeah. Matt, you had a vision a few years back. Can I say to you, not just from here, So you don't have to carry the burden of that. You just said that. Multiplication. Multiplication. Where he will call on what he's declared over your life, what has already been spoken, he will bless it and he will invoke the plan of what you sow. And it will be $100 bills fine for me. 
Not just from here. And maybe that's a slight little shift in your believing and your movements. But be diligent. Be faithful with this. And God's going to know. 2 Corinthians 9, you there? Good. So I'm catching you up. Let's look at a couple of words here that I think are critical and powerful in the mindset of a soul. So you have to get that God is into perpetual generations. That what you do and how you live your life is not, God's not just concerned with you. He is connecting you and, and, and maybe this will help us. You didn't just bomb up on earth. You were sewn up. You sprang up. Because someone birthed you. And someone birthed the you that birthed you. So you didn't just spring up out of nowhere. You sprang up out of a plan. You sprang up perpetually. You sprang up from a previous generation that maybe you don't know anything about. That's okay. That's perpetual. It can be before you and after you. We have to think perpetually. We have to think about another generation. Do you know if you sow sparingly, the generation that follows you will reap sparingly. Do you know, can I correct the mindset that anyone here might have or that maybe you've heard? If I struggled and I don't take care of my children, I do not believe it is scriptural for me to say, well, I did a tough social media. How do I? That's not thinking about the next generation. I don't believe that Tyre and I should build up an inheritance and then tease our kids with it and go, we're going to buy some RVs and we're going to drive two RVs because we have enough money to drive two. We're not going to give you any inheritance. We're going to spend in this while we have time. And Tay's going to drive after me and I'm going to drive after her and we're going to get around straight. Baby. Come on, you heard that? You know that there's a generation of people that think that way. I'm going to spend it all while I've got it because I can't take it with me. I believe an inheritance is something that is perpetual. Now what we leave for our children, it just goes on and on. It's on a heavenly rotation. Yeah. So if you hold something back because you spare, care about what you spare. Because what you spare, someone else will live in that spare. Yeah. Come on, if you're so sparingly, there will be a sparing harvest. Yeah. Verse 6, if I say this to you, he so sparing will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. So let each one of you give us the purposes of heart. This is a purpose thing. Right? I believe the mindset of a sower, don't sow emotionally. Don't look at your finances emotionally. Pull your heart out of it. Because if you oversee your economy with emotion, you will always sow to self and sow to profit. You will eat it. You will give it to you. You will keep it for you. But if you pull your heart out of it and you think perpetual, you think about the next one, you think of far off. Come on, every sower is not thinking about one grain of seed. They know that if I, if I don't put that seed there, there's nothing else coming. Because they can, a sower can see a far off. So Jesus is saying here, he's saying, come on, I have perpetual, I'm thinking of far off. We as a church and the vision of our church is not just about yours and my experience. What we do today will be reaped someday in the future. Come on. It will. It will be reaped someday in the future. Now God corrected the Jews and the Israelites because they grew fat. In Deuteronomy 32, they got fat with God's provision. And they lost their mind. You see, if you're fat with provision, you'll lose your mind. The word says that they were unmindful of the rock of their salvation. They were unmindful of the rock of their salvation. Now, in Genesis 9, when those animals came out of the ark, God said, Every animal is going to fear you, people. They're going to dread you. So you're face to face with Crocodile. 
That crocodile's not thinking, I've got your leg, baby. That crocodile is, is immobilized, the word says. That crocodile is immobilized. That crocodile is it, it prostate, it just, it just stops. God said that's how it was going to be. Straight in the mark. But then in Deuteronomy 32, because a bunch of people grew fat with God's provision, God said, they're thinking they're doing stuff without me. And one of the things God said is, you're going to now, you're going to now feed the teeth of every beast. Oh, fuck. Next time you go to Africa, and the word says that you're also going to now the poison of every serpent. It's going to be after you. Oh, come on. So God blessed the earth. He said, now the animals are going to be afraid of you and you can eat all their meat. You can, you can slaughter them. So hunting was simple. You just jumped out from behind the bush and that thing just went, oh, here. But then a bunch of people got disobedient. A bunch of people thought they could do it themselves. A bunch of people thought that they, that they can carry it or that they can do it. A bunch of people thought, I can carry all this weight. I've got this. My, my economy is my economy. And God says, now come on. You must remember, you must remain mindful of the rock of your salvation. So I believe all the things that God teaches us in sowing, around giving, our weekly giving, And because a bunch of people, a bunch of people disobeyed God and thought they could be God, and there was enemies that were taking them out, God said, well, we're just going to remind everybody. So now the beasts and their teeth, oh, come on, be mindful of God. Be mindful of God. Be so mindful. Now I want to do this word cheerful. Give with purpose and not grudgingly. So you get to say You get to set. Remember, your setting is not connected to your salvation. Come on. Your setting is connected to your... What's it connected to? What's it connected to? It's connected because it comes from your heart, right? Your set always connects to your root. If you, if you sow sparingly, you'll reap. If you sow bountifully, you'll reap. So our heart, our set, what we set, what we set affects. What we set affects another generation. So you get to set. You don't have to do it grudgingly. But know this. If you spare, care about what you spare. Don't, don't, just, give it, don't just give it no thought. Don't, come on. Don't just give it no thought. Don't just go, well, uh, the fuel process. Let's go. We just picked up 18 beds, 19 beds from Kimpuni yesterday. Pete went for a spin uh, in our unit in the trailer, and I went for a spin in our truck, and we, we went around southeast uh, central Queensland and we met the poo to bring back 19 hospital beds to go in our next shipping container. Wow. Now I have a choice. Peter had a choice. The choice was there. Do we really need these nine points? Now, I, I, we, 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 Pete, did you decide? Did I, did I hang a heavy weight over you? Did I threaten you? No, we just, we just decided. And we decided. But you know what my thinking was? My thinking was far off. <coughs> my thinking was not fuel prices are doubled, and now it's going to cost us all curious $600 in fuel instead of $300 in fuel. And where's the $600 going to come from? I do, I know the song. <laughs> you see, care about what you spare. Did you know that we have conservatively put 2,000 beds, we've sent 50 containers into Africa, 51, since 2007. 51 shipping containers into Africa, 40 foot footer, 40 footers, full of foot. <laughs> now, we have, we have 60 beds now that we're going to go on the next one. So if we average 40 beds in every one of those containers, my son said 2,000 beds. Over 15 years, one person, on a bed for three days, and their family getting to uh, care for them on a bed, 
rather than on four. Some doctors get to uh, care for them on a bed, rather than on four. Do you know that 650,000 people have already been impacted by the beds that have already arrived? Yeah. Wow. Sorry, sorry, I got that wrong. 650 million. Wow. 2,000 beds? No, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. We've got more than that in a car. But like, if we put 2,000 beds in a shipping container to Africa, God carries the weight. Yeah. You see, you have to care when you spare. Because God does. Because what we are to sow and what we are to give has abundant multiplication in it. And if we don't sow it and we eat it, or we don't give our time, or we don't use our gift, we put it in our pocket. Now God loves a cheerful giver. This is going to rock the socks. Do you know that God sees a saw as a wealthy businessman and goes to a charity auction with the sole purpose of spending a whole heap of his money so that that charity is benefited? That's what that word cheerful means. It doesn't mean, oh, I'm happy to give up. That's me. No, I have a position. I understand that as a soul, I have my God and I have the kingdom of God right there poised, willing and ready to make its move. That I'm going to position myself and I'm going to give what God has given me seed to sow. And God is going to multiply that seed and He is going to benefit many when I sow it. And I know it. Now, if God says He loves that, <clears throat> come on, we talked about it in communion. God saw us as pathetic. We have, there's no way we can reach God. So He goes, I am the wealthy business. I'm the, I'm the God of the kingdom of heaven. I, I created all this. I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to, I'm going to give my son. I'm going to lay it down because I can win them. So when God says, I'm going to give you a uh, love a cheerful giver, He's revealing, He's revealing part of who He is. That's awesome. I want to touch on one more word and then I'm going to close. And I'll stretch this out another time. That when you are a cheerful giver, God is able to make, in verse 8, He's able to make all grace abound toward you that you will always have sufficiency. You take this out of here. I'm sorry, this is really irritating me. God is able to make all sufficiency work towards you. Yeah, I'm not still making the problem. Right, so, so when you pull it out, the promise is all sufficiency. You see, this mindset of a soul it doesn't think. The mindset of a soul knows there's enough for me. I have to sow this. Yeah. I've got to sow this. So God promises when you pull it out of your economy and you sow it, that way carries that way and there's sufficient there for you. Yeah. And you learn this, right? You learn it. A soul learns it and understands it. So God loves someone who's positioned themselves, who goes to that option knowing they have cashed up. You see, the sower understands that in here he's cashed up. Bless someone else. He's cashed up. This word righteousness in verse 9 comes from Psalm 112. And, and it's a powerful word. It's, His righteousness endures forever. That word righteousness means that the person is required to act. That, that a righteous person is, a, is required to act. It's required to act on the part of someone else to benefit them. So God's not just saying you're righteous, you're right with God. That will endure forever for sure. But when you position yourself to act on behalf of another, that's going to endure forever because that is righteousness. 
That you position yourself, there's going to be a, a, a perpetual rotation. The woman who, who, who poured out the perfume, a perpetual rotation. We're talking about her today, something she did 2,000 years ago. That's perpetual generational thinking. That's knowing that this, that this perfume could, I could make me smell good, man. But once I apply it and the smell goes, the perfume ends. And she had perfume for that. You've got food to eat. God promises you covered, but don't eat seed. So the seed. So this word righteousness is someone who applies justice and mercy and lives rightly. With virtue, knowing they live in prosperity. Now if you read all of Psalm 112, it talks about a, a man who fears God is wealthy and is rich. This is not a message to declare prosperity from sowing. It's a message to say sowing from prosperity. We are prosperous. We are the wealthy business person going to a charity event, cashed up. I've been to a charity event before, and I've been with those guys. And I, I can't put my hand up and be not anything, because I've got no cash for it. And those guys are just sitting there, yeah, I don't even want that shirt, but I'll pay 10 grand for it. Yeah, baby. God loves that about us, because that's who he is. This morning I want to hand these out as I close and I'm going to call on my trusty assistant. <laughs> Thanks, Will. Can you give them to every family or farm um, or, yeah, one per couple, one per family. If you're an adult person you, or a single, you take one each. Now, I just want to quickly explain this. In two weeks' time, this is your pledge card. Now, with Legal Legacy, we're going to take up an offering at the end of August. And I believe generosity is connected to opportunity and preparation. Right, so if I said to you today, uh, oh, uh, Vicky, Vicky, I need 100 bucks. Can you give me 100 bucks? Please give me 100 bucks. I really need it today. You're like, well, I'd love to, but well, uh, I don't have it. But if I said to you, Vicky, I'm going to need 100 bucks in two weeks. I just really need 100 bucks. Can you? You have got 100 bucks, you've got time to prepare to be generous. Right? So this, this pledge card is your time to prepare to be generous. So on the end of August, we're going to take up an offering and we're going to talk more about what that offering is going to go to. So the idea is, you put what you're believing to sow, what you believe God is going to get to you. And it's not your bread, it's not your car payments. Not your mortgage. Can I be clear? This isn't for you to suffer. This is for God to show you who He is. So I believe He's going to give you a seat. You're going to be able to identify it. We're going to help in that space over the next few weeks preaching about it. Where's the seat at? Again, talk about mindset of the soul. So you get to put your name on there, it says optional. So if you want to, if you don't want the left hand to know what the right hand is doing, that's okay. Don't put your name on that. But if you want to, if you want to say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be faithy, I'm going to trust God, I'm, I'm, I believe God's going to get some seed to me that's going to rock your socks, we're going to give you another pledge card in a month, in two weeks' time. So you're going to have two weeks to consider what you want to sow to Legal Legacy. Now Legal Legacy is going to contribute to the benefit of sending those containers. So stuff we're doing across the nations. Stuff we're doing local, Reconcile Life and Clyde Women's Services, Courage Project, helping families in our community, and half of the house, those are the three areas. Right, half of the house. What this place is ticking like and what the next place might look like. So you get to go to God, where's the seat at? God, what, what, what are you giving me? What are you supplying and contributing to me that I need to sow? And you get to write it down there. And you have two months to operate towards putting it together. Now, I believe we can ask God. I also believe you can tell God. I believe you can say to God, Oh, God, let's go big. God, I've never believed this before, but I'm going for 700 days. I know that scared some of us, but 
Did you know 150 people giving $5,000 over one year, less than $100 a week? No. Will be more than $700,000? Yeah. 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 Thank you.